Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Tile Coach. I'm Isaac Ostrom. I'm a licensed tile contractor in Northern California. Today I am excited to show you how to install a Dietrich Heat Wi-Fi thermostat. And if you haven't seen the videos that show us putting the Dietrich Heat membrane down and the Dietrich Heat cable, I'm going to put a link up right here that you can see those videos. But watch that video after you watch this one. Make sure to watch this video on installing a thermostat and go back and watch those other videos. Dietrich Heat is a really popular option for heating tiled floors. And this is a, a Wi-Fi thermostat, which is really cool. You can download an app and then control it on your smartphone so that, you know, say you're an hour away and you want to control it, turn your floors on when you get home, or if you just want to manage it with your phone, it's, it's really nice. So uh, what we got here, um, we already got our 120 volt power, and this is a 20 amp circuit, dedicated circuit going all the way to the panel. You always want to use a 20 amp, which these days is the yellow wire. It's 12 gauge wire, not the 14, it's the thicker. So we have that. Obviously I got the power shut off so I won't get shocked. We have our leads. So there's actually two mats in this floor. We have one that's like 130 feet and one that's 16 feet. So we got a big one and a small one. Uh, we've checked the resistance on everything. We've tested all the cables out there good. Again, if you want to see how we do that, make sure to watch those other videos. And I go over how we test the resistance on these cables to make sure that they're still good along each step of the way uh, so that you know that you're not damaging the wires. So these have tested out, they're good. We have two sensor wires here. The reason why we have two sensor wires is we want to spare just in case one of the sensors burns out. So only one of these gets hooked up. A lot of times when you have an elect when you have an electrician come in to hook these up, they get confused and they'll hook both of these up in parallel and you get faulty reading. So one of these is just gonna sit in the box in case one of the sensors burns out, then you can just swap it. That way you don't have to break up the floor to get into it. So these, these thermostats are actually pretty simple to install. And I think these go for I think they retail at about 250 bucks. If you're a tile guy, you can go to your supplier and usually get them for, for less, less money. But um, really good thermostats. Let me see, I'm gonna need a little, the only tool I don't have is a little screwdriver. Do you got a little screwdriver, Zach? Hey, Ronnie, do you have a little screwdriver? The littlest little? Yeah, the little guy. So it has this, it has this little screw right here, which is a little Phillips. And we'll see if we can find a little guy. Cool. Where'd you get this, Ronnie? I came in a little kit my dad got me a few years ago. Your dad got it for you? That's pretty cool. Quite a few years ago, though. So I'm going to take the cover off. So that's what it looks like. There's the... the control panel, the faceplate, here's the back of it. So we're gonna install this. Um, as you look on here, as you look on here, this is a GFCI, which means it's got an in and an out. So the line coming in is going to be our line going to the panel, our 120 volt, 20 amp line. This is the line that's gonna be hooked up here, black and white. And then we're going to have our load, which is our lead cables. So I'm going to hook these up in parallel, just one on top of each other. And that's how it works. And then these little guys, this is where the sensor goes in. So you can see the sensor. So that gets hooked up to the C and D terminals. The out, that would be going to, um, if like a relay, if it was going to another thermostat or something. Uh, but we only use the C and D for this installation. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut off because one of the things is we don't have a whole lot of room in these boxes. A lot of times you could do like ideally you would do um, like a double gang box with a single gang mud plate on it so that you have a nice wide box to shove all your wires in. Things do get a little bit tight in these, so. I'm gonna cut it, cut them off. 
and I have a little room to push some wires back in so I don't want to cut them too short but um, I'll start by cutting cutting extra off and you want to keep these tags so that um, you for warranty and I'll usually take um, it, when you get the Dietra heat, I usually take one of the stickers and put it inside the box so that, that way if anything ever happens, uh, you've got the serial number, production date, everything you need for the warranty is right here. I've been running short on blades for some reason. My case fell apart on my door, so it's like a <laughs> dangerous death yeah. trap to find one. Yeah, that happens in my toolbox, so I'll just have like a bunch of loose razor blades in my toolbox. But. Okay, I'm just gonna cut the sheeting on this. Trying not to cut the, um, there's a braid, there's a ground braid that wraps all the way around underneath this the sheathing, I'm trying not to cut it as much as possible. Okay. So as you can see there, there's the, uh, there's the ground sheathing. So I want to hook this up with the copper ground. So I'm going to try to unbraid it a little bit and What's up, Steve? Yo. Did you find the, did they find it? Yeah, they had the tub just, filler? Yeah, they had shipped it from Sacramento and just threw it on a truck and didn't tell anybody. Okay. Only the guy who offloaded it knew that it was, it was there. Okay. So we got it. So yeah, so what I'm trying to do is create a little pigtail with the ground braid here so that I can tie it with uh, our bare copper here. I wish there was a little easier way to do this, but I just kind of peel a little bit of it back. You see, I'm just kind of unbraiding it messily. If that's a word, messily. That should be good there. Just enough so I can get a good wire nut on there. What'd Johnny do? Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Oops, I forget things sometimes. Okay, so I got uh, these these two leads stripped. I'm gonna do the same thing to this other one. We're waiting on some. Yeah, I'm just shooting a little bit on doing this guy. It shouldn't take me very long. Okay, so this this cable's, hey Steve, did you notice this, is this the 16 foot cable has a different kind of? Braid? Yeah, this braid's a lot easier. It's not as tightly wound. Yeah, this one was real tight, and you can see the difference. Oh yeah, oh wow. Hmm. Probably because it's such a short cable. So it actually looks like it's 14 gauge lead too, instead of the 12. Do you have your multimeter, Steve? Yeah, we should test out these guys one more time. One more time. I test them, you know, I mean, I test them daily, so. Yeah, we're gonna test them one more time, just for good measure. Okay, so I got my Phillips uh, screwdriver. Actually, Steve's out looking for the multimeter, so I'm gonna hook up the, the um, line side first. And one of the weird things to me, okay, so the thermostat goes in like this. This is the right side up. But if you turn it around, every, the back is written upside down, which is kind of confusing. So, so the, the wire's actually going from the top. You'd think they'd come from the bottom, but that, they actually come from the, through this channel from the top. Oh, we got it. Oh, so Steve got us some multimeter. Okay, so ohm readings, that's volts. Straight down. Straight down. And we are 72.8, which checks out good. And then what I do is I also, you want to check between the line and the ground, just to make sure you don't have some kind of split where the line is touching the ground. You'd have a short, which isn't good. So. I don't have anything on there. I'm gonna check the bigger cable. 
It's going to have a lot lower resistance. And we're bouncing around 9 point. Try to hold it steady. 9.0, which is good. Gotta check continuity. So really, the resistance, you, you're gonna know if something's really wrong because the reading will be way off and a lot of times you won't get any read. If you get no reading on it, that means the line has been completely severed. If you get a resistance reading that's way off, you know, maybe a knife cut through part of it and it's not having the same resistance, but um, yeah, just match that up with what the specs are. Okay, so we got that, we're good. Okay, now we're gonna hook up our line. Again, make sure that you got the power off. Always important. Okay, and so there's a neutral side, which has a little N on it. I'm gonna put the white over there. Real simple little connection. Tighten it down. Grab my whole saw right here. Okay, got that. So I'm gonna take these little wires and just fit them into that channel like that. Now I'm going to take my two leads. So I got my blacks. Put my blacks together. And on these nuts, you're going to have two different, you're going to be able to go on either side of the screw with the two. So to get the best connection, put, I'm going to put one black on one side and the other black on the other side. There we go, like that. And this doesn't matter. I could have put the whites over here, the blacks over there. This doesn't really matter. White on that side. Okay, so those are hooked up. That's a good connection there. And then it's got a nice little cover snaps on. Protect protect everything there. Alright, so this is gonna go on here. There, so that's how it goes, so everything's protected. So I like this. When they first came out they didn't have this feature. And I was always worried that the ground was going to short out on one of those lugs. Okay, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, to um, connect the bare copper with my, my shielded ground as best as I can. Again, these heated floors are kind of a tough sell in the summertime here in Sacramento. Uh, we, get, we get some pretty hot days. Been fortunate this year. It's been pretty mild. Oops. Yeah, it's been pretty mild. It's gonna heat up this week though. It's gonna be like in the upper 90s. Hey, Ronnie, do you have one of those um, crimp, those little crimp sleeves for the grounds, the gotcha. copper grounds? Gotcha. Do you have one? Yeah, I got one or two. I just need one. So the wire nut doesn't do real well with connecting braided line and um, in solid copper so I'm actually going to use a crimp connector so yeah so Ronnie Ronnie went and hooked me up with uh, one of these little ground crimp connectors 
So I'm just going to use that to connect these. You know what I'm going to need is a pair of channel locks. I can crimp them with. You got a pair? Of... Yeah, let me see if I can smash those. I have a crimper tool. Do you? Yeah, it's an, I know where that one is. <laughs> but yeah, I usually twist, crimp, crimp and twist with these guys works pretty good. They're cute little vice grips. <laughs> so yeah, that's a lot, that's a lot better connection there. So that ground is in there solid. Okay, so now uh, I gotta try to figure out a way to get all these wires smashed in here. I think I got plenty of room. Since they're coming in from the top, I'm gonna bend them back like that. And it's gonna fit. So, what I'm gonna do here is actually, um, let's see, we're gonna go through this hole. I'm gonna take the sensor wire and go through this little hole right here. So that it doesn't get smashed. So you can see how I'm routing the sensor wire on the side and then it's coming down because there's not really any room on the top or the bottom. So that's gonna go like that. And sit just like that. Okay, so now it's time to screw those down. Ryan, you got a, a Phillips impact handy? And yeah. Uh, Amazing how many freaking tools you need to forget about them. <laughs> oh I got my pouch, I got everything. I mean I could hand screw this in but when they put this box in, kind of botch this. These are cut-in boxes. And you can see um, the drywall got kind of beat up on the bottom. You need a really nice clean square when you put these in. I'm gonna see if I can move it down a little bit. But when, you, when I was pushing this in, it pushed the whole box in. So let me see if I can drop it. If I drop it, let me see if I can get that to bite. Okay, I think I got that side. So, to try to poke the little flap, because so the way these cut-in boxes work, they have a little they have a little tab that as you tighten it flips down to the back of the drywall and sucks the box into it. But now that little tab is it's kind of tweaked in here and I gotta figure out a way to get it down. Yeah, it's, not, it's not flipping down, it's just, it's coming straight like this. Yeah, it's kind of botched this box here for me, Steve-O. Who can I blame it on? Too much. Yeah. Touch it too much. Right about line. Huh? Touched it too much? Yeah, it, it blew the drywall out on that. We should put two by fours and anchor them on all of those so we could push, you know, have a little bit more pressure. Well, the, they actually hold really tight. I'm, 
you'd be surprised like when they're when the drywall is nice and clean and nice tight fit all the way around. Hey, but I think I got that that tab going down now. My laptop. Okay, I think you I got You can just it. unscrew those and pull them off. I think I got it. Okay, Zach, I think I got that tab down. Let's see what's going to bite. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, there's a nice tight fit. Okay, now we're going to try it again. Now I got our box in tight. Okay, so then we got our sensor cable routed correctly. Also the guys when they did this, you see how this is like quarter inch higher than this one. And it didn't help that we had to drop the box, but I think this is gonna be okay. I mean ideally you'd want these lined up. So again, I don't know what happened there. Did we put a new box in here or was this one ex existing? That was there, we put the one on the right. Put the one on the right. Uh, no, we put in two boxes. We did? We added that, turned that into a two gang so it can control the LED. Mm -hmm. Let me see what's going on there. Oh, I don't want to mess with that. It's the... Uh, it's those retro boxes, they just, they don't sit flush against the wall. They have, they have that tab that hooks onto the sheet rock, and that's why it's fucked out. Well, no, it's solid now, it's just... That one's good. Oh, well, I don't know what, that must be... That's a good, that's the one I... Okay. Yeah, so this is stuff that makes a difference. You might not think that, like, you know, you just get it close, but if they're right next to each other, you got a thermostat that's sitting down. I mean, if it was way off, like if we did that or that, but, well, here's what we might have going for us. It might line up with the top. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. those are always bigger. And you never know what's going to happen because these are always... So Janice, if you're watching this, I never know. mind the part right before this. We meant to do this right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's just always the trade-off. What's the trade-off? <laughs> Well, you need to draw a center line through the boxes. If you want them to be even in any sense of the word, you have to draw a center line through the boxes because this plate's always a five eighths bigger than any yeah, plate that's finished there. Yeah, you got to find the center, and not try to find reference off the top because that's probably what what somebody did. Sorry, I'm blaming Ron. Ronnie. Right. Ron. I'm being quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that, Ron was all okay. quiet. I was like, did Could I do the work here? Man, that's, that's the least thing that could happen. You should have just job blamed like it on the new guy. Like, yeah. there's no, <laughs> no recourse. <laughs> okay, the fall cool. guy. Yep. Okay, so... So the sensor wire has a resistance reading too we can do, right? Should be good. I think it's like it's something like 10,000. It's like 10k. Oh, well, the one I set it on is usually just set for hundreds. To to the 20k then. 20k. So again, I'm going into the C and the D with the sensor. Only time I've ever used the A and the B was when I was using a, uh, a relay to 
to tie multiple power sources together to control off one thermostat. Those are only for big systems though. Those are like, we've done, we've done like thousand foot installs on these. And I think you can only get like, even when you do 240 volt, I think you get like 250 feet, I think is max square feet out of one, uh, one power source. So that was like, we did like four power sources, like four 20 amp circuits that were powering this floor. That was a big one. Remember that one, Steve? Which one? Where we did all that heated floor over in Roseville. Oh yeah. The thousand, it was like a thousand feet. Oh yeah. All with Dietra heat. Seamless. Yeah. And so um, they have these, these power modules that that connect to one thermostat so the thermostat's connecting all the other power modules so you don't have to have a thermostat in each room you can control it all in one okay so that's how everything hooks up i'm just kind of bending that little wire there and then it just goes on top so it just goes back on top like that and then down so if you're trying to put it on rest it on the top and then just push the bottom in now we got to get to that little screw again. I love this little screwdriver, Ronnie. Oh, it's came in handy quite some time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like how it spins like that. Okay, so now what we're going to do... Oh, yeah, look at that. We lined up with the top. Deliberate. Beautiful. <laughs> I think I did do that on There's purpose. the thumbnail. Okay, let's go power. Let's go check it out. Come out here with me, Zach, and we'll power this up. So yeah, on this job, again, you probably, if you haven't seen the other videos, but we had to replace this whole section of siding because when I tore out the shower, I actually punched a hole through there. So we replaced all of this. And again, I'll put the link up so you can see some of that video, but we replaced all the siding. Unfortunately, the, the siding that they had from you know the early 90s when they built this was discontinued. So we had to go with a little bit different pattern, but they were fine with it. And so we repainted it, matched everything. Here's the crawl space to the bathroom. So when we ran, ran our power, we just ran it down here. There's plenty of crawl space. I mean, like the, the floor is like right here, which is nice. So it's a real easy run. And then back over here. Janice has a cool little garden. Little succulents. Any of them flowering? None of them are flowering. Yeah, this is a great growing region. Here, the Sacramento Valley here is famous for agriculture. So we can grow anything. We got a great growing season. So almost every house you go to around here has some sort of little garden or veggie, veggie bed going. But this looks like we got some bell peppers, um, yellow bell pepper, um, it's going to be a sweet pepper. Tomatoes grow great here. Basil is one of my, one of my favorite herbs. Um, and of course cucumbers. So yeah, we got a nice one going at home too. So we actually have, um, at our, sh at our shop at Otile, we actually have a, a, a gardening store right next door. They mostly sell hydroponics for growing cannabis. So they set me up with this awesome hydroponic setup for my garden. I'm just kind of geeking out on it, but it's got, my tomatoes are like this tall. I got big tomatoes growing. They aren't red yet, but I mean, my garden is awesome. I've always loved gardening. So I grew up as a kid. My dad always had a garden and it's just so cool. You can go out in the summer, pick a tomato off the vine. And um, anyways, that's kind of a cool thing. So yeah, they, they have a beautiful yard here. I mean, look at these granite boulders. These are massive granite boulders. So Rockland, where we're at right here, used to be known for its granite quarries. So throughout the little town of Rockland, so there's some old granite quarries that are sprinkled because granite is just here. These are just sitting here. These came with, it's not like they were landscaping rocks. They probably moved them and put them in one spot. But all throughout Rockland, under the ground is huge, huge um, 
I don't know what you'd even call it, basically huge mountains of granite that are just under the, under the ground. And so we got those quarries in. So a lot of our buildings in the town are built out of granite blocks. And, and so a lot of the granite that went around, um, that went around our country was quarried here in Rockland and then went out. You'll see a lot of the streets like in our little towns around here, the curbs will be made out of like the curbs that you park on the street, curb and the sidewalk. The curbs will actually be pure granite, like solid granite curbs. They look just like that granite. It's kind of that salt and pepper, white speckled granite. But that's, it's pretty neat. You know, I noticed that type of thing. It'll be like walking on the sidewalk. Oh, that's all granite. What a cool thing. All right. But yeah, check it out. All the trees that grow around here, like Japanese maples, oaks. You see the, the oaks are, um, these, these big oak trees are, are native to the area. Um, and then you'll see redwood trees. I mean, it's a trip that we get like everything from palm trees to maples to redwood trees, the, the old oak trees. I mean, everything just grows really well here because we got a nice temperate climate. We get really warm summers, but we get nice, cool, brisk winters. We get full seasons. It doesn't snow here, but it, um, you know, long growing season and trees do really well. And we also get a lot of rain and so everything is fed when, when storms come in and they hit the Sierra Nevada mountain range, we're like at the foothills of the Sierra Nevada. So the storms come in off the Pacific coast, big storms, they hit the Sierra Nevada and all the clouds back up and it just drains all the precipitation out of it. So it snows in the mountains, creates a snowpack and that feeds all of the rivers and they make their way down to the Sacramento Valley and then into our reservoirs and then finally out the Delta. And so the Delta is really cool too. We get a lot of fish that come up. So we have Andromedus fish that come into our creeks. Actually the creek that's right in their yard, they have a creek right here. The salmon can make it all the way from the Pacific Ocean up the, Sac up the Delta, up the Sacramento River. Then it would hit Dry Creek. And I think this is actually Clover Valley Creek. So this creek, the water that goes here, I mean, maybe it's just a little bit of it, but this will make it all the way to the Pacific Ocean. And we're, probably 200 miles from the ocean and so but anyways this is a really cool climate I talk about it all the time that's why I'm not moving no matter how bad people want us to you know they're trying to force us out um, with their ideals of, of how they want to change this I'm sticking around and be active I mean that's the only thing I can say to you guys uh, with all the pressures to kind of conform to one to one pattern of thought and everybody with the stay safe movement, you know, everything is stay safe, be safe. I say be smart. We got to use our brains right now more than ever. If something doesn't seem right to you, it isn't. And question it. Don't just go along because you're getting pushed this narrative on social media the, or other people are pressuring you into some kind of idea. You don't need to subscribe to it. It's okay if you do think that way, but Think real hard about it first. Sit with it, meditate on it, make sure it makes sense to you. Okay, so finally we're at the panel after my long rants here. But what we got here is um, we've labeled it heated floor. So this is our heated floor. So I'm gonna flip that on. So now our heated floor should be powered up. So we actually added a circuit. So I'm gonna be putting in another one of these in one of the empty slots. And this is actually gonna power our jacuzzi tub, I believe. Um, anyways, so it should be on now. Okay, okay, so that's always a good sign when you flip the power on and you come in and you see the L LCD display lit up. So first thing it's asking me is language. We want English. System test, okay. Thermostat pass, air room sensor pass, floor sensor pass. So it's doing its little test here. Ground fault on. So we gotta test the GF, GFCI. So the little button on the top, that's a test. Okay, so now it's testing. So if, if there's a ground fault, so if something ever happened, you know, maybe a shower door guy drills into your cable, something happens. Uh, and you see this happening, um, that might be a problem. I think there is a um, periodic test that the system does on itself to test the GFCI. So all you do is there's a button on the side right here. 
So when that's going, you'll see that there's another little button right here. Push that and it says GFCI is functioning properly. Um, we're gonna use Fahrenheit, load measurement is on, sensor type is the 10K ohms. The date, what's the date today? It's the 17th? Is that the date? That's right. Yeah, 17th, so it's already on there. Um, what else? Time. Time is 9.45 a.m. Floor protection. Max is going to be 104. And now it's going to start heating the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this on a, on a little heating schedule. So there's, there's some cool settings in here. And I'm gonna go to heating schedule, view edit schedule. So now you can see how what's gonna happen. So at 6 a.m. it's gonna ramp it up to 82 degrees. 9 a.m. it's gonna bring it down to 74. 5 p.m. it's gonna go to 82. 11 p.m. 74. So it's gonna stay on 74 degrees all night long, just comfortable temperature. Uh, I usually adjust these up warmer in the winter time. Right now, again, it's summertime. It's the middle of June. It's gonna be 100 degrees this week. This would probably just be off. Come like, I'd say like around October, my heating schedule would be like, I would change 6 a.m. to probably like what I would do here. Let me see. I would change, you know, because if you get up early to take a leak or something, maybe 5 a.m. I'm gonna crank it up to 83. 83 is a good warm temperature that it's actually gonna feel comfortable on your feet, but it's not gonna heat the whole house too warm because this will cause the ambient temperature in the whole bathroom and part of the bedroom to go up. So I'm gonna do 5 a.m. 83 check mark, boom. And then um, I would probably change 9 a.m. maybe up a little bit, 77. I'd probably be okay with it kicking off at 12, but in the winter time when it's really cold, I would, I would keep these all up. I would change these on. See, this one's inactive. Um, I'll make it active, check mark. Again, this one, check mark, make it active. So now it's gonna be on all the time. Again, now that it's summertime, they're gonna probably just turn it off. And so, oops. So now that I have this, this, so this is only Monday. Now watch if I scroll to Tuesday, it's, I would have to change the whole thing because Tuesday's still at the factory settings. The one I just changed was Monday. So if you want to change every day of the week and then maybe you want to set something up different on Saturday and Sunday when you're home all the time. But that, so that's, that's running the schedule. Um, and I'm just going to reset to factory for now. I just wanted to show you how you do that. And then there's also energy use, which will show how much power you're using in kilowatt hours. I actually made a really cool video showing how much it costs to run these systems based on kilowatt hours and um, your utility rates. And I'll put the link up to that video here so you can see it. Uh, user settings, you can change your date and time. Um, and yeah, you can actually, so you can change your air and energy tariff. So we're on PG&E power here, which is pretty expensive. So I'm gonna leave that up around 25 cents, maybe a little more. Uh, date and time, what else we got? Daylight savings, unit, information support, user reset. Okay, installer settings, sensor type. You don't need any of that for protection. So that when that's just going over the stuff we already set up in the initial. Okay, let's see Wi-Fi. Okay, so I'm gonna have to get with them on there. I believe it's this one. There, it's funny because I got their I got their Wi-Fi password for um, for my iPad, and I, it, they you know they have one of those passwords. It's like you know. 20 numbers and digits long and like yeah you could change that to make it really easy 
But so I'll get with them and we'll set up, we'll get it on a network. So basically you'll have, if you download an app on, uh, on the phone, let me see if I can find it on the iPhone. Let's see, search. I'm gonna, just do, I'm gonna do Dietra Heat. There you go, so there's an app there. I already downloaded it for something else. I'm gonna open it up. And I think this is set, this is probably set to the, the old one that I had. Let me see. See if I can log in. See what password I used. Oh, cool. So I'm logged in. Okay. Let me see. So I gotta try to figure out. Um, I'm gonna see if I can grab that. Let's go see if. I think they left, didn't they, Ronnie? Uh, I think so. I'm gonna see if I can get in. I know they showed me it's sitting on their router, so I'm gonna see if I can get that because I'd like to show it to you. All right, let's come in here, guys. I'll probably edit it out. But... Preston? Hello? Preston? Oh, hi, Janice. Oh, no problem. I'm gonna grab, just grab the Wi Fi password. Okay. Okay, thank you. Got the Wi-Fi password. to the cast iron mount. Yeah. We'll have to help him out with this mount there. Anyways, now she's flying straight. Oh glory. Oh glory. So I'm going to go back to Wi-Fi, choose a network, oops, Wi-Fi, that's our, okay, enter a key, I'm going to go, okay, so we're connected, thermostat name, we're going to call this. for account. <coughs> okay, so it's connecting to the server.
Weather location, 9, 5, 6, 7, 7. So I guess it's, it's going to tell us, it's going to take the weather into account too here. Got it? Okay. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to see if I can control with my app now. Okay, so now I have I have the, um, the new one. I have Ernie and Janice here, so I can actually change this. Let's go back to the main. You see, you bump that up. Adjust. See now it changed on here. Isn't that cool? So I'm gonna do that for few days. Choose a start date. Actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to bump it up a little more. So I'm probably going to come back with my infrared reader and I want to show all the lines on the floor. So I'm going to bump this up to 82. I'm going to adjust it. 83. So there we go. So yeah, everything I can do on the app now I can goes right into here. Pretty cool. So, all right, so I'm going to let the floor heat up and then I'm going to use my infrared sensor and make sure all the lines are heating up under the floor. You can actually see them with the, my little FLIR infrared sensor. Okay, cool. Okay, so I got my iPad and this is a FLIR little infrared detector, little infrared camera that plugs right into an iPhone or an iPad. I'm just using my iPad because it's got a little bit bigger screen. And so you can download an app uh, for FLIR. There it goes. Okay. Okay. Okay, so there, now it fired up. So you can see, uh, looking down, you're looking at my, looking at my feet right there. And you can see I'm standing on the heated heated cable coil. So as we go around, you can see the pattern. And, and this is really nice. I use this because we're going to end up um, putting some shower door hardware in here. And look, you can see the wires going up over the bench there too. And the bench is heated which is nice. The heat dissipates a little bit more on the quartz. You can't see the coils as clearly, but it's definitely warm. And then you see on the other side, the line coming down. So that's pretty cool. The whole heated floor is, or the whole shower floor is heated, but it actually has given us a temperature reading on the floor too, which is nice. So it's like the floor is reading 80, 81 right now. And the thermostat's set to 84, so it's still heating up, but you can see um, underneath the tub, we didn't heat. And then uh, we got kind of a mess in here, but you can see how, how heated everything is. There's our toilet. So that's gonna be warm. And then there's all of our coils in here. Like if you needed to drill into a shower floor, and again, we're not gonna be drilling into this, we're gonna use some U-channel, we're gonna find other ways to adhere the glass, but if you did, like on a shower curb, uh, it's a great way to be able to locate where those cables are. You can make a mark, and then if they're gonna drill into it, they won't break one of those wires. The other thing is too, if there's ever an issue, you'll be able to see if something does get broken, you'll be able to see where the line stops heating. That's going to be where your problem is. So um, this floor is all heated up, ready to go. And I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you already haven't. And again, turn on your notifications. That way you can see my videos first as they get uploaded. Right now I'm uploading two videos a week on Tuesdays and Fridays because a lot of my videos won't show up on your home feed or suggested videos unless they're really popular. So if you want to see them all, turn on your notifications, click like and subscribe. So again, I hope you got something out of this. Watch the next video coming up. That's going to show how we got everything done 
uh, up to this point with this with the shower floor so watch that video i love you guys i love being your tile coach we'll see you on the next video